Hey everyone, welcome back to Cyber Gray Matter. I know it's been a while, but I'm back with another video on a topic I think you'll find interesting. There have been some really positive changes in my career, so my main focus has been that. I intend to get back on a better schedule and have a list of future topics to cover, but I'd love to know if anyone has any suggestions for new videos, so please leave them down in the comment section below. Today's video is on threat modeling and the associated frameworks. We'll define what threat modeling is, where it's used, in the top frameworks, and what those look like. So what is threat modeling? Threat modeling is the proactive way of identifying vulnerabilities in an environment. The goal is to anticipate attacks before they happen and mitigate any risks that are identified before they can be exploited. So where is it used? There are many ways threat modeling can be used, and we'll talk about the five that are listed in some of the documentation found on MITRE's website. As always, links are in the description. First is risk management, which involves prioritizing threats. Second is cyber wargaming, which are tabletop or red team exercises that emulate an attack and can help determine the response of the individuals in an organization. Number three is technology profiling and forging. The profiling is the analysis of current capabilities and technologies, and foraging is a search for technologies that could be of potential interest. Then there's systems security and engineering. Since threat modeling can be done through the SDLC, or Software Development Lifecycle, it's very beneficial for the design, analysis, and testing. Last is security operations and analysis. Think about the blue team in the defensive side, in which threat modeling is very beneficial. This includes things like threat hunting, continuous monitoring, and DevOps for these types of threat events. It's also good to note that in these cases, it's important that threat intelligence be shared. Top frameworks. There are various frameworks that you can use to aid in the threat modeling process, and we're going to briefly go over some of the main ones. There are more than just the ones that we'll talk about today, but these are a good variety that can be beneficial for a variety of organizations and conducive to your learning. It's important to remember that when choosing a threat model, it's best to choose one that's based on the desired outcome and not one that's most popular. Let's start with attack trees. Attack trees are a threat modeling method. They were and still are used to lay out the objectives and different paths a possible attack could play out. There can be multiple trees that are laid out for a single system with each showing an attacker's likely goal and how they might achieve it. The image on screen is an example of an attack tree. These are good when presenting issues to non-technical stakeholders. It's good to remember that they can also become very complex in a large IT system and are used in conjunction with other frameworks. Next is STRIDE. STRIDE stands for spoofing, tampering, repudiation, information disclosure, denial of service, and elevation of privilege. It was originally developed for internal use at Microsoft, so they were able to develop more secure software. It's now widely used within the security community and is also part of the SDLC, or Software Development Lifecycle. The next framework is PASTA. Yeah, there's a threat modeling framework called PASTA, and this stands for the Process for Attack Simulation and Threat Analysis. This is a risk-centric threat modeling framework that's main aims to bring business objectives and technical requirements together. It looks at threat mitigation as a business problem. This model contains seven steps, which are definition of your objectives, definition of the technical scope of the project, decomposition, analysis of threats, analysis of weaknesses and vulnerabilities, attack modeling, and analysis of the risk and impact on the business. Next is DREAD. This threat model is more recent and also made by Microsoft. DREAD stands for Damage Potential, Reproducibility, Exploitability, Affected Users, and Discoverability. This is an add-on to Stride and helps ranking the threats after they're identified. What's nice about the DREAD model is it allows analysts to rate, compare, and prioritize threats based on severity. This is done by giving each threat a rating between 0 and 10, in each of the categories in the acronym. Lastly, one calculates the overall risk severity by calculating the average of all the category ratings. 
This will produce an overall threat rating, with critical being 40 to 50, high being 25 to 39, medium being 11 to 24, and low being 1 to 10. Next is Octave, which is the Operationally Critical Threat Asset and Vulnerability Evaluation. Due to its flexibility of this methodology, it can be adapted to fit the organizational needs of almost any institution. It also only requires a small team of security, IT, and other operational professionals to work on a project like this. That being said, it's not an easy task or something that can be completed quickly, as it's still pretty complex. There are three phases of the implementation process, and they are one, completing a full assessment of the environment and documenting all assets and their relevant threats, and this is beneficial as holes in the security can be identified. And this is all while building an asset-based threat profile. Two, is identifying the vulnerabilities within the organizational infrastructure. During this time, new policy and procedure can help manage these vulnerabilities. This is the stage when pen testing comes in. And three is the final stage, and this involves creating security risk management strategies where the found risks are prioritized before creating a plan to mitigate and manage these security risks in the long term. This last one's pretty important as well, and it's from NIST. NIST is the National Institute of Standards and Technology, and it has its own threat modeling system, which is in the form of a guide. The following information is from the NIST 800-154 documentation for Guide to Data-Centric System Threat Modeling. Let's go over the steps. Step one. Identify and characterize the system and data of interest. Two, identify and select the attack vectors to be included in the model. Three, characterize the security controls for mitigating the attack vectors. And finally, four, analyze the threat model. What's good about this model and documentation is that it provides the basics of data-centric system threat modeling, and organizations are able to use it as part of the threat modeling process. It's good to note that NIST didn't create this as a replacement for existing threat methodologies, but rather as a source to define what should be included in a data-centric system threat methodology. Now that you've learned about some of the common threat models and methods, which one did you find the most interesting? Which one might work best for your organization? This was definitely a fun video to work on, and I'd like to expand and dig deeper into the processes of one or more of these frameworks in a future video. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like and any questions you may have down in the comment section below. Thanks.